Well, and you brought up Luke Roman, and that's one of his points, is if you really did a draconian cut to federal spending, you would you would trigger almost immediately a deep recession, which would then blow out the federal deficit. So it's really a, it's a real predicament, a real conundrum that we're in right now. Yeah. No, I mean, there's the, the, there, will, there will be a day of reckoning where we all realize that this is this is this is probably unsustainable and there will be some significant and some material cuts to, and not not just to, to the budget deficit but to the way we live life in the social contract that we have uh, with the u.s government and those are the types of changes big changes that tend to occur in four turnings anyway so it's, um, that's coming we know that's going to come it's the path that that, that 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 we take to get there as investors that i'm most interested in and i think is the most relevant for the you know the folks on this call and so that takes me back into my previous um, point, which is, historically speaking, the Fed has, has had a pretty consistent thing. Now, the Fed's only been around for one fourth turning, so let me be very clear about that. We can only source data from the previous fourth turning because the Fed was um, you know, introduced in the early 1900s, uh, 1913, I want to say. And so the, you know, based on the historical patterns that the Fed has, uh, based on the historical um, policies the Fed has implemented, we can observe a pattern of behavior that sort of winds up in this, you know, kind of the point you made at the beginning of the call, David, which is monetary debasement and financial repression are really the only ways out of this. If you think about this from a game theory perspective, what is the choice the Fed will make that will cause the maximum amount of utility for a system that probably is already is going to experience a lot of inflation uh, and potentially a tremendous amount of uh, geopolitical consternation anyway? It's, you know, monetization and, 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 and monetary debasement. So, if you look at, you know, for example, you look at the uh, real T-bill yield in the previous four turning got deeply negative and was persistently negative uh, in the previous four turning as the Fed, you know, implemented a uh, yield curve control for, you know, I want to say about 10 years uh, up until the early 1950s. You know, in our view, yield curve control is very much uh, a possibility in this fourth turning as we start to see the more onerous impact upon both the economy and asset markets that you know very elevated rates of public sector borrowing will, 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 will have right don't forget we've had okay so that's that's critical Darius. so that's really where you're talking about financial repression exactly because again i think a lot of listeners don't know that they get monetary debasement but not the financial repression so, yep. so this idea that yields are yields of government debt is are held at very low below inflation levels and they did that after World War II. You're, you're right. That's how we got out of the, the huge debt to GDP coming out of World War II. By 1952, I think we've gone from 120% down to 70%, so about a 50% decline in seven years. Mm -hmm. But how do you think they'll do it this time? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. So uh, one, the, the, the sort of three things. If you think about uh, keeping yields artificially low relative to inflation and probably relative to where they would otherwise be uh, in a uh, market-oriented system, we don't think the treasury market is functioning uh, with true market forces. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, number two, obviously, you know, printing the money, monetization, um, but the, you know, your typical standard monetary debasement that we're all familiar with as investors. And then finally, they'll be uh, using their regulatory function uh, to force, you know, you know, commercial banks uh, and other financial intermediaries like insurance funds, pension funds, further into the treasury market to kind of fill up the uh, large vacuuming sound left by, you know, other pockets of other cohorts of investors. 